Okay. So I was asked to talk about two things. The other is uh, sales and operations planning. Does everybody know what sales and operations planning is, SNOP? In fact, put your hand up if you're not sure what it is. Oh, that's excellent. Okay, so I finished, Rob. They all know what it is. I've got three minutes. All right. Um, ha have a read. So, uh, <laughs> apart from the chuckle factor, um, again, from our experience in helping organisations, there are lots that say they have SNOP. Uh, there are very few that have a good SNOP process. So, perhaps I'll give you some hints on what a good SNOP process needs to include. Uh, by way of analogy, if you were going to conduct the Sydney Symphony Orchestra tonight, what things would you need to do a successful job of it? Sorry? You need a conductor. Yes, you need somebody out the front. This hints are always in the slides, right? What else would you need? Sorry? Okay, so let's take, you've got musicians. So we've got, you're all my musicians. You're all here today. I'm here conducting. What else do I need? I'm going to need some sheet music. And you know what? I'm going to need the same sheet music for every one of you. What happens if I give you different sheet music? It's going to be a disaster, right? I can't tell you the number of times we walk into businesses where people are working from a different set of numbers. You're laughing. It happens, right? I've got my own little spreadsheet over here that I trust and I like. And it's not part of the mainframe. It's not part of, but I trust that I'm going to use these numbers. I can't tell you how many times you walk into businesses and the procurement managers looking at the sales forecast saying, what? They can't do that. They're not going to sell. I'm not going to buy that. They're not going to sell it. Is that different sheet music? Yeah, it's different sheet music. The fundamentals of an orchestra are no different to a business. You've got to have A, sheet music, and everybody works off, and woe betide anybody that wants to play with their own sheet of music. And you've got to have a, why do you have to have a conductor? You guys know how to play. You're all professional musicians. Why can't you just do your own thing? Sorry? Why do you need someone steering the ship? You know how to play. Just go and play. You've got the music. Hmm? <laughs> it's like herding cats. Yeah, all right. So some of you may want to play a little louder than the rest, and it may not be the right blend and the right mix, but you need somebody at the front to say, that, listen, you play on Dante and you play Fortissimo and, and the blend. You've got to have somebody making the ultimate decision about where you want the journey to go. And, of course, in your business, that's your, your senior executive. So there are various approaches, uh, components of SNOP. I want to sp skip past that. But this is the essence. You concur? Yeah, the red's the key. It's a simple version. Uh, I'm not sure that Tim's 100% right because it's a single version of what we think might happen which is not always the truth because <laughs> what we forecast and what happens, there's sometimes a big difference. So can I perhaps finish up with this? This is the, the process as we see it. Uh, the, the, all these steps are essential. So first of all, SNOP is a cyclical process. It starts at the beginning of the month. You've got to have a statistical forecast. You've got to have a demand plan as a starting point. On or about working day two of each month, that, that needs to be produced. The stat forecast is always going to be, always going to be better than the manual forecast and, and better than a spreadsheet. So you need some proper tools to be able to do that. But that's just the stat forecast. What is statistical forecast based on? The rear view mirror. It's what happened yesterday. It's not a bad predictor of the future, but it's not in isolation adequate. So we have to add to that, for example, then what we suggest to companies is is go and check with your customers, go and check with your retailers. During those meetings, you may get told they're opening three new stores that you didn't know anything about, or you're being deranged or delisted, or they're adding. You need to get that IP, you need to get that intelligence from your biggest customers. So this is Pareto, so you're not gonna do this across every customer, 
but you're absolutely going to do it for your big customers. So you get that IP and overlay it against over your stat forecast. Um, you then need to understand what your sales team are aware of in the marketplace. That's the next level of input to creating this forecast. Uh, and then understanding what's happening in the product space, what new products are you launching, what products are you deleting, what life cycle changes you're making. All of that aggregates to around about day 11 with this critical meeting called the business demand review meeting. Its purpose is what? Uh, it's definitely to meet consensus, to meet consensus on, sorry? Uh, so the phrase that we use is unconstrained demand. So we just want the sales and marketing side of the business to tell us what they're going to sell, irregardless of whether we've got it or whether we haven't. If we had it, can you sell it? It's an unconstrained demand. So this is like a relay race. We're handing over a baton. Sales now hand over the baton to the operational side of the business. So this side is all demand. This side is all supply. So they give it to us. And they say, we want this product in this quantity, in this location for this customer. Can you do it? What's our job? Uh, get it done if, if we can. So our job is, yes, we can do it, sleep easy, you sell it, we'll deliver it. Or, Houston, we've got a problem. We can't get it in the quantity, in the whatever. And therefore, it's our obligation to then say, but here are the alternatives. I can air freight it. Can we substitute this product? Can we do, and here's the cost associated with that. Let's make a, then a decision on which way we go. Okay, so that's the supply chain component. That then goes to the CFO, because we need to know that financially it's the, it, it's the right plan, it matches the budget, we have the financial resources, we're not breaking banking covenants, et cetera, et cetera. And then around about day 20 or at the end of the month, we then send that to the final review meeting which is where the conductor, CEO and the exec team are able to say, yes, we're happy with this plan for the future, go and execute it. And it's the only plan that you're authorized to execute or let's tweak the plan. I'm not quite comfortable with it. Let's make some changes. And then that tweaked plan is then the one that becomes the one that business drives ahead with. So in three minutes or less, that's an SNOP summary. I think I'm done. Just one question on that last diagram. Um, how often would you sort of go through that process? Say in a 12 month period. Oh. I oh, know it's recycling, but. 12 monthly. Every month. Every month. Okay. The only, the only part of that that you wouldn't in some businesses go through monthly is the marketing plan. Okay. Because it may not be not dynamic enough sure. to warrant it. But most businesses, it's every month. Okay, thank you. Any others? So lack of questions mean you didn't understand a word of it or it was all so plain and obvious you got lots out of it. Well, they're you're all. happy. They're you're all. Stephen, thank you very much. Well, pleasure. I know you're extremely busy at the moment. So, great, thank you. Okay, so.